Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome for uh, joining me today on this edition of Catterman Adventures. In this video, me and um, one of my buddies, Tyler, from the Rowan Bass team, aka Rowan University's fishing team, we went on a little trip to the Potomac Tidal Basin in Washington, D.C. It was awesome. We had a great time. Sadly enough, you know, he didn't catch the big one. I got the 29 pounder. And uh, so, yeah, it was pretty exciting. But um, let's do into that. And let's show you some of this footage. Are you ready? Are you ready? Bow! Uh, sorry. So, as you guys can see right here, we're actually driving across the Delaware Memorial Bridge. And it was a beautiful day to really take a nice scenic look out over the river. And it was just all around. Just perfect. Perfect weather conditions. It was about going up to 65, 70 degrees. And we were coming towards the end of the summer but it was it was still nice you know and i, I kind of told tyler too like listen you know look at that sky i mean you, you got to get that camera out. you got to take a picture you got to take a video or something so uh picked up my gopro and uh yeah it's a gorgeous sight it's also where a lot of stripers are so uh and then later down the track we're very lucky and fortunate we actually drive over the susquehanna river too so this was a beautiful sighting too you know i always love this you. It's very calming, even though the drivers on that bridge usually like to cross in each other's lanes, and you know, it's, it's gonna get a little, a little stressful on there. But it's nice, you know. I'm actually I want to do a video over here too, and I want to make a fishing trip down there and catch some of these uh, flatheads that seem to be dwelling in the big susky. So about a couple hours later, about you know, three and a half hours later. We arrived in Washington, D.C. and the first thing to do was park my car in the limited time parking. And, uh, yeah, well, here we go. We got to, got to the tidal basin and now we're just getting set up. I really wanted to make sure I could show Tyler to what's going on. It was really interesting to me because every couple of minutes, tourists would come by and they would ask us questions. They were very interesting. Yeah, this is this is the start of it. Of a beautiful day at the Washington Sea. So here, you know, I'm just throwing the things out, the baits, just getting everything ready, you know, town our chat, man. Uh, he really has no idea what to expect. Like, he didn't know if we were going to catch something. I mean, we've gone there beforehand, but he really wasn't sure if we were even going to get lucky. Like, for all he knew, like, our gas money and, like, all the stuff, like, we'd had to pay to get their tolls and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> it could have been a complete waste of our time. But you know what? The thing is, it's always important. You know, you just have a good time. You don't think about these things. You just... I really enjoy being out there because it's, you know, it's it's a beautiful experience whether you catch something or not. And really, all that matters is really the people that you're with and have good company. You know, and if you have a beautiful view like that with the Jefferson Memorial and with uh, the Washington Monument, like <laughs> you can't ask for anything better than that, really. You know. So nonetheless, you know, I was really trying to spread the baits up. So I kind of want to really, you know, get around the area. And don't mind me having my rides out right there, because, yeah, yep, as you can see, they, they didn't really get in the way of people <laughs> too much. I'm just glad nobody got, quit, like, clothes hang. Nonetheless, you know, it didn't take really too long. It took only about, like, 45 minutes for us to get our first fish, which was incredible, because, you know, I wasn't even sure if we were really going to catch something. <laughs> Like I said before, you never know. It might happen, it might not. But in this case, it did. As you can see right here. We're just hanging out, chatting, you know, enjoying ourselves. A little breeze in the air. You know, it's, it was really, it was a gorgeous day out. You know, I'll say that again and again, because it really was. Actually, I'd worn too much. And here it goes, first bite. Oh, look at him take that. You know, he just, he really wanted that piece of gizzard, chat. So, at first I thought it was a big fish, but... Once I started reeling it in, I kind of noticed it was like just dragging and just basically like a garbage bag. You know, and another term for that for us would be dragging in a bag of potatoes. You know, Got to give it that powerful crank, you know. Bass fishermen have the bass crank. We 
the cat fisherman, we have our cat crank. Uh, looks more epic. It's with bigger gear. As you saw, you know, we were attracting quite a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah, some people had to kind of figure out that they should walk around their rods, not underneath them. But uh, in the end, it worked out. There weren't too many uh, tourists around, you know. Mind you, this was on election day, so in general, there weren't a lot of people around. Yeah, there we go. There's the first blue catfish in the Potomac. <laughs> yeah, Tyler was going to use the head, and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm just going to pick it up and drag it. But so, yeah, there, there was a first fish of the trip. You know, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> there are some of our cell phone zombies of our generation. Not sure what to do. Like I said, a lot of people are really interested. They want to take a lot of pictures. Which is, you know, I was fine with in the beginning. As the day went on later, I was starting to get a little bit of annoyed because I really wanted more privacy. But in the end, I also had to understand that it is Washington, D.C. It is the capital. And somebody's just, you know, there's not much you can do about it. Might as well just smile, you know, and that's it. Say hi or just explain to them their, to their questions about what you're doing. And, you know, you, you move on. You go on with your day. So we had our first fish on shore, which was great, and little did we know that about 15 minutes later, the next fish was going to come. And where, well, there it goes, and boom! Uh-huh. There he goes, he's on. On the Cast King Sharky 2, 5,000 size live bait edition. On a Rip and Lift Super Cat medium heavy spinning rod. Look at that man really great rod. I, I love those rods because they're, you know, they're basically like tangled with catfish rods or big cat fever rods. They, for $40, they can handle a channel cat with great fun, but they can also yank flatheads out of structure and blues, you know, they can control them too, even in high current. The thing is, too, for only $40, these rods can handle up to 8 to 10 ounces too. There you go, some more attention, people are watching. What the heck are they pulling out of here? A couple of years ago, the Potomac was considered the cesspool of America, and you know, nowadays it's slowly recovering. So there you go. <laughs> well, I can't really say that Tyler's first blue cat was a, an impressive catfish, uh, blue cat Sanders, but it was definitely, definitely awesome for him. He was really happy about it. You know, there he goes. He's like, whoa. <laughs> I didn't catch a huge fish, but I, I guess I'm okay with it. It's like, do you want to keep it? Eh, yeah, I guess I'll keep it. Do you want to eat it? Yeah, I guess I'll eat it. Okay, cool. So then uh, we'll eat it. <laughs> so yeah, needless to say, that blue cat died in a horribly painful, bloody, and gory manner. That is terrible. I did not mean that. He died mercifully in an icebox. But nonetheless, time goes on. You know, we're just hanging out. Just like before, we were just chatting. It was it was so nice. I started to be around 70 degrees, and uh, we met this nice older gentleman right there. Actually, you can see him down there slowly walking along fishing, and um, he was actually fishing for bass along the side. And he was explaining to me and Tyler that, as it seems, the tidal basin attracts a lot of bass tournaments every year, and it's supposed to be great waters for very large trophy-sized largemouth. I don't know, I found that very, very cool because, you know, when you see this, this tidal basin, and you see that there's not a lot of structure in there, you would never expect large bass to be in there, but nonetheless, they were, so, you know, big tip right here, as you can see, is reeling in the baits, you gotta refresh your baits, I mean, I knew after some time, and we had a lot of bait with us, so it'd be fine, we should rebait our baits, get some fresh scent up there, and, uh, yeah. So, you know, I was getting a little hungry after a while, so we had fresh baits out, just eating my sandwich, and oh, I'm eating my sandwich, like, come on, give me a break, let me at least eat my lunch, what the heck? So, no, I can, no, no, there's no way I could have, you know, reeled in that fish with a sandwich in one hand. So, I passed off to my sandwich to Tyler, he took a bite, said it tasted bad, and gave it back to me. <laughs> that didn't actually happen. So, yep, that was about what, the third fish of the trip. You know, 
it looked like it was going to be nice, but the moment you see the, when you're setting the hook or the circle hook sets itself, you see that fish starting to really bobbing, bobbing, bobbing around like that real quick, you pretty much know it's going to be a small fish. So, I, I think he was, he was still nice. I mean, he wasn't bad. But, yeah. At this point, Tyler was getting a little frustrated because I was catching the bigger fish. Not huge, but the bigger fish. And <laughs> he had the one little shrimp. So this little, this little man over here actually wanted to see what we were catching. So, uh, yanked it on up on the shoreline and here we go. That's number three. After bringing him up on shore, we wanted to take a couple of pictures, or at least think about whether we wanted to take him home. And uh, this young man really wanted to know what he was to bait, what to do. I'm a little secretive in my techniques, and it doesn't matter, I mean, you know. But yeah, look at that. Beautiful little blow. I think he was just a little bit too big for us to take back. So I decided to let him go, and to grow larger. And hopefully in four to five years, be a 40 to 30 pound blue. So this is about halfway through our trip. Or maybe a little longer, deeper into it. And so pretty much, you know, you could call it pretty successful. We had a couple of missed bites. And at this time, we had about three blue cats. And this was when we caught the biggest fish of the trip. Look at that 29 pounder. Yeah. Yeah pretty nice put up a good fight you know and again for some odd reason I grabbed the rod now it's time to weigh it out so I kept trying to get him you know I wanted to make sure that I would get him right in the middle of the jaw because you don't want to do it towards the sides because that'll hurt him you know you don't want to break the the jawbone how much is it five pound nine uh dude it's like 54 pounds holy holy Holy, wow. <laughs> 28 and a half, about. We'll say 29. Yeah, what a beautiful fish. You know, it was really nice, you know, that we at least get rewarded. And this was actually the spot where we caught uh, our biggest fish in the Potomac so far. And the last trip we were there, we, we got a bunch of huge fish, and it was starting to slow down around this time of the year, but clearly, as you can see, we were still doing well. Um, had to take a couple of selfies right there. Usually the way we call it with fish is when we catch them, they get a piercing, and then they get a free selfie from us. Always make sure to give the fish enough time to recover before you let them go. Even if they seem like they really want to go, just give it a couple seconds to really see that they'll be able to swim off fine. Now this cat had a little bit of a deformity, so you might have been a little bit stunted for whatever reason, but I'm sure he'll still grow. Any fish that are over 24 inches, you should really let go. You know, we want to be fostering a growing blue catfish population, trophy catfish population that other people can enjoy too for future generations. There he goes, off in the depths. Well, so we kept fishing for a little bit. We gave it our gave it our best try, but after that fish, really, there there really really wasn't much going on anymore. The sun was starting to come down, I thought we would catch more fish, but in the end, actually, we were getting less and less bites, and basically once the sun came down, even though I was filming, the the quality of the camera is not good enough to really keep up, and it would have been very bad footage. So what I'm actually going to do for now is I'm going to keep it more to daytime footage with you guys, so that, well, you can actually see what's going on. You don't want to just look at a black screen, right, with like some blinking LED lights and be like, well, this is cool. I'm sure you'll unsubscribe them, and I wouldn't want that. That'd make me really sad. So, as I'm sure you guys saw right there, there was uh, basically the trip summed up. We we did pretty well. We didn't do as well as we did the last time, where I wasn't able to get as good footage. Um, nonetheless, I'm really glad you guys checked in with me. 
you know, I really appreciate the views, and I really appreciate, you know, you guys keeping up with uh, the old Caterman adventures. Now, uh, lately I've been fishing for a lot of crappie. I haven't been really going catfish fishing too much because it's been very windy and it's been very cold. And usually around this time of the year, I'll kind of lay low, you know, I'll fish for like smaller species of fish. Um, I think I'm going to go again for the blue cats with Tyler in a couple of weeks, so I hope you guys stay tuned. Also, I talked with Mike, uh, aka One Rod One Real Fishing, and I think we're gonna go. We're gonna go try to catch some blue cats in the future too. So I'm really excited for that. Mike's an awesome dude. You know, I met him. He was really down to earth, really cool guy, and you know, he's just all around a good guy. So I'm really looking forward to that. Nonetheless, one thing I'm gonna add in is the long lost Chronicles footage of the giant 42 pound blue catfish coming at you right here. Here you go. Ah. Look at that monster. Alright guys, well, I'll see you next time.